Hi, in some previous videos, if you want to go back and watch, we've looked at some areas under the standard normal curve, um, where we're using a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and we're using z-scores. However, most of our data is not, well, really all of our data is not in that nice form. Um, so how do we work with real data? How do we work with a real value? So I'm going to put a problem up here. All right, so we have a problem here um, with a tablet computer and a battery lifespan. A normally distributed mean and standard deviation are given, have to be given in any kind of normal distribution problem. Um, so we're looking for this right here is kind of our key. Um, so let's look, it's normally distributed, the mean is given, the standard deviation is given. Um, so our variable here, we kind of have to decide on that is the battery lifespan. That's our x. Um, and we know that this x, our variable, is normally distributed with a mean of 2.3 and a standard deviation of 0.4. You, you've seen me use this notation in class. Remember that it's referring to um, the n stands for that it is normally distributed, the variable is normally distributed. And then I write the mean and the standard deviation. Um, and so anytime you see that, you know, this first value is the mean and the second value is the standard deviation. That way we can kind of use this mathematical notation. So let's look at some problems. What if I wanted to find the probability that this, per that this battery, any battery that I selected, would last longer than three years? So what I'm asking is, um, what is the probability that the battery will last longer than three years. So all those words sometimes can get a little scary, but really all this is asking is what is the probability that my X variable, my battery lifespan, that my battery lifespan will be um, last longer, so that's greater, more than, so that's greater, will be greater than three years. So all I'm asking here is what is the probability that this randomly selected variable x is going to be greater than three? Um, so we can simplify this really quickly. So words aren't too scary. And then we know that, that this is x values, but our table that we want to use for a normal distribution are z values, a standard normal. So is there a way to standardize this problem and make it like a standard normal distribution so that we can use the table to solve? Um, and there is, and that is with a z-score and our table is z-scores. And we know that the z-scores are the number of standard deviations and x value is away from the mean. So to find the number of standard deviations that I am away from the mean, I simply take the x value, I subtract the mean, that's gonna tell me the distance between x and the mean. Um, if it's negative, it's, I don't like the word distance because sometimes it's negative, but that just means that it's less than the mean. Um, and then it tells me um, if it's positive that it's greater than the mean. Okay, so which direction it is away from the mean and um, the difference between the two values. And then to kind of standardize that and get it into the number of standard deviations, we divide by the standard deviation and that's our z-score formula. Um, and so I'm just going to simply plug these values into this to standardize this problem to a z-score problem because we know how to solve those with the table. So we'll find our x, it's what we're dealing with here, our 3. The mean is given here. And the standard deviation is given here. And this gives us our z-score, the number of standard deviations we are away from the mean, and it happens to be 1.75. If we do that math. So really when we're asking the probability that x is greater than 3 and we know this is normally distributed, what we're really asking or what we're asking is the same thing as the probability that z is greater than 1.75, standardizing that problem. 
And now we're in a z-score problem, which we know how to do. If you don't, you can look at a previous video um, about standard normal distribution, but you're just going to look up this 1.75 in the table. Uh, but before we do that, we want to make sure that we are given the correct area that is wanting here. So we have to ask, you know, is it greater than, is that going to be the area to the right, or, or is it going to be the area to the left? So greater than this way. So this is the area to the right is what we're wanting here. And we know our table gives us the area to the left. So to get the area to the right, we have to do one minus the value in the table. So I'm going to get that up there really quick so I don't forget. And then I'm going to look up 1.75 in the table. And that is 0.9599. And then you'll do that subtraction and you'll get the area to the right because this is the area to the left. The whole area underneath the curve is one. So if we take one minus the area to the left, we get the area to the right, which is 0 0.0401 here. So that is the probability that our battery will last longer than three years. Let's do another quick problem. What if we want the probability that our battery is going to fail or last shorter than two years or less than two years? So we'll do two years. So I want it, to, maybe I want it um, to make sure that it's going to last at least two years. Okay, so what's the probability that it's not going to do that? Um, and we, of course, want that to be pretty low. But with this one has a less than instead of a greater than, so we know this is the area to the left, kind of that less than left. Or if you think about less than is this way, and I'm moving to the left here. Um, so here, reducing that words, those words to some math, um, wanting the probability that x, our random variable here, is less than 2. Same procedure, um, we're going to find the z-score of 2 using that same formula that I just went over. So we'll take our x of 2, subtract the mean of 2.3, and divide by the standard deviation of 0.4, giving me, giving me the number of standard deviations I am away from the mean. Um, and this one is point, negative 0.75 because 2 is less than our mean. So standardizing this x just like we did that last problem, it's the same as asking the probability that z is less than negative 0.75. First ask ourselves, do we want our area to the left or do we want the area to the right? Less than to the left, okay? And so we look up in the table. The table gives areas to the left. This one's a little bit simpler. And then we can look it up in the table and immediately write it down, 0.2266. All right, so this is an area to the left.